In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Be seated. Well, you two are almost married. <laughs> and we went through what I'm sure seemed like some endless premarital counseling sessions. Well, consider this the last one. I think one of the things that we need to remember that is often forgotten in our society is that marriage should model the relationship of Jesus Christ and his church. Now, what do we mean by that? That sounds kind of vague, doesn't it? Yeah, kind of hard to pin down. But consider this. Jesus Christ so loved his church so loved the creation that he gave his life on the cross to save it. I would suggest that the two of you should have the kind of love for one another that you would give your lives for the other. Now, what do I mean? I don't think anybody's going to be crucified in the next few years around here anything like that, you know, unless the IRS audits you, that's different. I can't help you there. Mm -hmm. But what I do mean, Josh, is that a guy has to go fishing for his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Got it, too. I think we're going to try it without this. Occasionally, a guy has to give up a fishing trip. I hate to say that out loud. Because there's something even more important to your spouse. Occasionally, you have to give up the 30-point buck or a night out with the guys. That's not just a one-way deal. It works both ways, guys. Tasha? Same goes for you. Now, I don't know how you are about going after the 30-point buck or, you know, going fishing or a night out. Hopefully not a night out with guys. I would have to have a talk with you about that. With the girls, okay? We have to give up things for each other. When you think of love for each other, right now, the big thing is Eros. You know, it's, it's a hot, passionate love. But one of the things I've seen in you two is not only do you have that kind of love, but you have the other kinds that are equally, if not more important over the long run. Okay? You have the agape kind of love. That's worth a lot. You have the philos kind of love. Those loves are the kind that will carry you through. There are going to be times when you have disagreements. I don't care what anybody's told you. If you don't, you're not paying attention to each other. Okay? When you hear somebody that's been married 50, 60 years say, well, we never had a disagreement in all of our married life. They either have Alzheimer's or, or they are lying like a rug. You will have disagreements, and that's okay. If both of you saw eye to eye on everything, you would lose half of the value of the marriage. One of the great values of marriage is that the two of you will see things from your own perspectives. And each of you will contribute to the assessment of the situation and how to act on it. 
Two heads are indeed better than one. When you have these disagreements, which will come, I want you to think of each other, and you're going to probably take some ribbon about this from the guys. I want you to think of each other as one of these flower petals. Each of you is fragile inside. We have feelings whether we admit it or not. And it's awfully easy when you're living with someone you love every day and you're having disagreements that get out of hand. It's terribly, terribly easy to crush that flower petal, to crush the person you marry. So when you do disagree, disagree in love. Always, always remember that you're not number one anymore. Tasha, to you, number one is God, and he's come second. Josh, God's number one. Tasha, come second. And your family. Then, all of the other things, the guys and the girls and what have you. I want to caution you about something that I see happen way too often. When you do disagree, keep it between yourselves. Do not go to mom or dad or grandma or grandpa to recruit help for your side of the argument, ever. When I pronounce you man and wife, you two begin your own family unit. If you can't settle it between yourselves, or if either or both of you are getting hurt, then you seek out a priest. But you don't go to mom and dad or grandpa and grandpa. And you don't go to your buddies and you don't go to your girlfriends. Because what happens when you do that You recruit feelings in them in support of you, and it makes them resent the other person in the marriage. So that five, six years later, when you've forgotten all about the disagreement, Ma and Pa or Grandma and Grandpa or the girlfriends or the buddies remember, and they resent that other person, and that's not why. Okay? So you take care of it yourselves, or you go find a priest. Okay? Hopefully one of the few sane priests we have left in the church, and I'm not claiming to be him. (laughs) Most of all, most of all, imitate Jesus Christ in your marriage. And if you do that, if you really do that and, and walk in the imitation of Christ and his church, then you will model the ideal to our society and our screwed up society may just begin to turn around, which it desperately means. Remember always you will be in my prayers and hopefully in the prayers of this whole company who wish you only success, as does our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.